Let's uh, start off. Yeah, you know, raise your hand like always. We'll get a wireless mic your way, and I think we're starting over here. The left, right, and the right. Mark doesn't have another commencement address to give today before we start. Um, I wasn't sure how much you could even talk about Vernon Adams, his status. Obviously, he's kind of a elephant in the room. He's he's here, but he says that he's kind of a little bit away from getting qualified. Can you even address kind of what his status is? Dave won the uh, office pool. We were wagering whether it was going to be uh, UCLA-related, Vernon Adams-related, or uh, the latest was the Derek Jeter, Hannah Davis going Dutch. That was the, the it was a third, third, third odds. All breaking news. I want to hear about the third. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. Can you talk about the I can't. I can't. Right. Um, yeah. Basically, on that deal, we kind of have a policy of you know, basically, when guys sign a letter of intent and a signing day deal, that's kind of one avenue to to arriving here. If guys uh, transfers, Matt Haggerty is here. His whole process is done. Um, uh, we don't an anticipate any hiccups on the guys um, that have been mentioned or are signed to letters of intent or otherwise. Uh, we don't anticipate any any issues with that. Other than that, no yeah, no other no other comments. I also know you guys don't often talk about injuries, but could you get a give an update on Farrell Brown and, and how he's doing and do you anticipate him playing football next year or red shirting or, or where is he at right now? We anticipate to work his tail off to, to get back out there as fast as possible. We um, uh, no idea, um, and that's we try not to ever set a parameter either either way on that. Guys, uh, in general, end up way ahead of the curve in general uh, when you approach it that way. Um, and I anticipate him to to be fantastic when he's back out there. Sure. Matt Haggerty, obviously a great addition from Notre Dame. What do you think a guy, a veteran like him, can add to the line? Just that. I think we have a lot of, of, of talented young guys and seeing the incoming guys the other day uh, as a group. It was funny. I met them right after the spring game all together. They were, they were like, lined up, uh, and they looked fantastic, and we were kind of joking about that then. And then as they showed up yesterday, they still look fantastic. A lot of times at that position, guys show up. In, in less than ideal physical condition, and they, they look great. Um, and just that, that infusion of uh, leadership, you know, playing, playing that position for any period of time, you're going to have a natural kind of way about you, and, and we would anticipate that would be the case. We won't know that uh, as coaches until, until August when we're out there with them, um, but excited about our, our short-term and our, and our long-term depth. Um, that hopefully that will, will create both the recruiting and, and his, uh, his uh, arrival. Sticking with Hager, did, did he reach out to you guys, or when did you guys kind of feel like you wanted to explore that option of a center fifth grad transfer? I don't remember. I can't, I can't remember exactly the, the, um, uh, the, the exact you know, series of events with, with that one. Somebody asked me that the other day about somebody else, and we literally get – multiple you know transfer requests per week and and you know some of them are are lower level or same level or how you know however you want to uh, call that um, and then you just kind of go to the next thing and there's a process of both you know from a uh, compliance standpoint and then just from a reality standpoint of academics or character all the stuff that we kind of okay take the next step and when it becomes more serious then it's more more legitimate but I can't remember exactly to answer that more quickly. Rick Morgan. Coach, a lot of experience walked out the door last year at the end of the season. What do you kind of expect for this year's team as far as a ch how different do you expect it to be in terms of personality? And where do you see maybe some new leadership arising? I'm sure Jeff Lockie will be one of them, Vernon others. But where, where do you see the others uh, starting to pick up their voice? Well, I think the last part of what you said there, each, each team has a different voice. And even even uh, in the evolution to lead to last year's team, you know, that three or four years ago, Hironis Grasso and Marcus were guys that were very, very, very quiet. Hironis a little bit more outgoing than, than, than Marcus. Keenan Lowe, kind of that, that same thing. I think Royce Freeman is, is definitely one of those guys that is a guy that needs to, to raise his voice and has. You know, we've tried to, to um, create situations and, and opportunities for, for him to be a leader. For Tyler Johnstone's always been a, a fantastic leader. Um, Jeff Lockie has been a, a rock um, uh, defensively. 
Uh, Rodney Hardrick has, has been an, a great voice. Joe Walker's a guy that, that needs to speak up a little bit more and has. Um, uh, and then on, on the defensive line between DeForest Buckner and, and, and Dooch, just having a little bit more, more juice to those guys as leaders. Um, I, I thought for, for where we were in spring ball from a leadership standpoint, I thought it was, was really good other than um, – Guys just absolutely, you know, grabbing guys and getting them somewhere on time in the summer. That 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 kind of uh, uh, that's what matters the most. You know, this time of year we really rely on our culture to 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 get better, to have everybody improve during the summer, not just maintain, not just survive. And and their leadership is what makes that happen. Uh, and as we left them. Um, Right before their their finals week and and dead week kind of deal. Right as we left them, I thought we were in uh, a very good place uh, with that development. Marie, come back. What is the plan to get Haggerty and Adams up to speed on the offense this summer? <laughs> well, again, a lot of that is is player driven at at all positions for for all newcomers. Those guys are are uh, kind of thrown into the fire as far as how they do the the player run practices and all the things uh again some of those guys that we just talked about whether it's uh, uh jeff Lockie, royce tyler it, it's just a indoctrination and enculturation of, of how we do things how we lift how we condition how we how we uh, how we do the stuff when they're out there with the ball by themselves um they take over and we have complete confidence in in that process um and and that's at every position and on the spring game, I recall you saying that kind of the six weeks or so after the spring game, that's when the staff would make hard decisions about where uh, a guy who could play multiple positions would at least start fall camp. Can you share with us some of those decisions about where a guy like Charles or even the incoming guys like a Malik, uh, those multi-talent guys, some of the linemen might start fall camp? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Charles is still to be determined, and that's that's a, a – a wrestling match of coaches and of you know if it was up to Charles he would play every snap and I mean that in the best possible way I mean he's just like the kid on the playground that wants to do everything he's the kid at like the you know the all comers meet that does every event and ends up with 700 blue ribbons that's kind of who he is um and pulling him back is a is a good you know a good problem to to have um and so we'll see on him uh Drayton Carlberg uh, it was the first guy that popped into my mind as a, as a young guy. He wants to, to start out on, on defense. Um, who, who else were you specifically? Were? Malik it will be on offense. Um, don't know where exactly. And for all those guys, for all those guys that we recruit like that, we try to be honest with them. But they're going to pick where they where they start. You know, initially they're gonna they're gonna pick the position we start and it's just like now in the recruiting process you talk to a guy and you know and I always ask okay what's what's so and so telling you or what's this team and and they tell them usually exactly what they want to hear and we try to take a little bit different approach of hey this is this is where we see you but they're gonna they're gonna have a better experience initially if they if they pick it After spring ball, you said that this team needs to develop a confident mindset during summer. How can they establish that before heading into fall camp? I think any time, you know, confidence is is bred out of preparation. And the more they're around each other and they work and they see the value of, of looking over and going, if I'm the, whatever, I'm the backup right guard and I see Royce Freeman working, I believe in that guy. You know, that that's that's confident, and, and vice versa. Um, and just that that shared experience. I think one of our biggest strengths is our guys, our guys are from all over the country and they're together from now until whatever it is, August 8th, August 10th, when we're out there for the first time, they are, the, the chemistry starts now. And that's a huge thing. Th those two things I think are, it's immeasurable how much that affects our our you know performance on the field and off the field, uh, and so you know again goes back to the the importance of the guys that we bring in. Great. In terms of X's and O's with the new bodies and particularly a new quarterback, how much do you anticipate the playbook changing? And then on the defensive side of the ball, you see any changes there at all as as well? Um, there nothing drastic. I think everything is going to be tweaked. Um, you know, to your, just your, 
cyclical strengths, whether you have more of position X versus position, you know, on a year to year basis, um, how guys develop, uh, who ends up being, uh, you know, the secondary guys and the, and the, you know, the backups at linebacker. I think we're, you know, we like where our depth is headed on the D line. And then there's a bunch of moving parts in the back end that, that kind of remain to be seen. And if you sat here and said, Hey, we're going to be a, you know, whatever, a, a dime based team with as many DBs as we lost, that's probably not, you know, our best course of action and so we we plan for what we think is going to happen and then have a ton you know just a ton of of uh contingency plans uh both ways certainly offensively um you know we're not going to drastically change anything um and then at the same time play to the strengths of of where our our what our quarterback can do and then the skill around him and how they can deploy the best we we see fit gary thompson yeah, Coach, uh, weren't quite sure with Farrell Brown for obvious reasons. How about Devin Allen and Tyler Johnstone? Are they much more along? You fully anticipate them being a little different? We fully anticipate them being, what was it, being different? Well, being different than Farrell Brown as far as progress. They will be different than Farrell Brown. Yes, progress. Um, I don't know. We just, you know, those guys, um, by by all accounts of, of both directly conversing with them and then the, the, you know, the limited time we've seen them has been has been great. But we try not to go, hey, you know, we expect you back at boom date because, you know, y you never know. It might be might be two weeks before that or a month before that or, or whatever. Um, but we just want those guys to to work every day for their teammates. And they're they're doing that right now. We think. Rob Coach, Royce's name nice comes up a lot. Oklahoma City Dodgers. Triple oh, okay. Yeah. Not trying to fire any shots here. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Royce a lot when you're talking about leaders, and he's obviously a pretty naturally quiet guy. Does he need to come out of his shell that much, or can can he be effective uh, with his you know standard nature? Absolutely. I think well, both. He needs his standard nature, and then his standard nature turned up a little bit. And and Royce is. A fantastic guy you know he's just a great dude um, uh, you know you take away his his brilliance on the field but off the field he's just you know he's everything you want um, comes from a great family great kid all, all that stuff and just needs to to know my simple conversation with him a lot of times would this guy be better if he was more like you and he kind of thinks about it for a second but yeah I get you you know blah, blah, blah. and so just of of coming out of come you know to use your phrase coming out of a shell a little bit more um and infecting you know his his realm a little bit because his physical stature his his performance he has a you know a ton of credibility and just 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 eliciting more out of other guys and and they'll respond and ha and have responded Jerry Allen Coach, with um, being a head coach, how much easier, not easier, but how much more confident is it for you to be able to go into another season with your entire staff pretty much intact? I mean, all the communication and everything. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's absolutely immeasurable. I've used that a couple times now. But the the <laughs> the value of efficiency, Not you know, again, you take away these guys are unbelievable experts at what they do. They're at the top of their game, some of them after 30-some years being there. Uh, but just all, all that stuff, they're great guys to be around. They're great for our, our guys. And then just the efficiency, you can just sit there and look at somebody and, and – they know, you know, they know what to do. We will meet for a grand total of nothing as a, you know, as a staff zero before our first practice. That, that is just, un, you know, now you can focus on development and nutrition and strength and recruiting, you know, all, all these other realms, um, rather than, okay, Hey, we call this the, you know, Mustang drill and we line up over here and we spread out five cones and that, that kind of stuff. Uh, again, just hopefully we can just pour more into the individual student athlete and and those guys do a great job of that jackson county jerry Andrew. a couple uh kind of policy things in the wider view college athletics came out this week one of the conference commissioners tabling the early signing discussion and you'd kind of come out about your preference about maybe getting guys on campus paid for in june um do you like that they kind of step back and maybe can reform from a larger view recruiting, not just instituting it in December? And then second, the Pac-12 sounds like they're discussing paying medical costs for athletes four years out of school. Kind of where do you stand on those? Yeah, I'll go, I'll go backwards. I mean, obviously anything that, that we can help 
these guys that, that have been from a physical standpoint or an emotional standpoint of something that, that has happened during their career, of, of course, you know, we're, we're in favor of that. And, and we try to and have support and, and supported and treated our guys and we'll continue to, to make that as, as best as possibly can going forward. But that, that makes a ton of sense. And then on the early signing period, um, I think you know it's it's we'll, we'll do you know we'll do what they want as far as the the tabling and where where this ends up happening. The the only thing I was concerned with if they were going to move it any sooner than the the junior college signing date, which we would have been good with, is they would have had to have allowed us to to pay for official visits in like now. You know, so if you take the month of June and you have official visits, you eliminate any impropriety that takes place we we didn't we didn't get some kids on campus this summer because we didn't pay their coaches that's a fact uh there's other places that they're you know that they get paid you know an enormous talent fee they must be great coaches for for where they're going to to coach and you eliminate that um and so we're trying to to work through that as best as we possibly can uh if it would have been in december that would have been that would have been fine with the current with the current recruiting calendar if it's any different than that, I think we need to look at a, a June official visit, but we're good with it. Speaking of recruiting, Scott Frost said during right around the draft that the last couple of years, it's kind of negated the negative recruiting you guys have had of can't get guys to the NFL. Since you went out and saw a lot of guys, did you get any new feedback or see any change from the last couple of years of the draft? Well, no, it's, it's, it's always, po- you know, it's always positive uh, uh, from certainly from from our the information that we disseminate and w- whatever, but then it's the people you're recruiting against that come up with very creative figures on things. Um, uh, uh, but I think that's something that it's just factually incorrect at this point. Rick Morgan, just uh, on a on a personal note, uh, you got a month till camp starts roughly. What uh, opportunities do you have for vacations, getting away with the family and the staff uh, as well? What are, what are their opportunities for that? It's, uh, yeah, it's a great, it's a great month uh, for, for just that of, of getting a little time away uh, with your family, with, you know, being a little bit more of a normal person, still a ton of recruiting going on. Uh, I think one of the, this is like vibrating. Am I creating that? Um, one of the one of the neat things, though, as you start to talk, there is is a bunch of our guys are doing stuff together. You know, there's a bunch of guys doing stuff uh, both here and other places together. And so again, it's a, a bunch of guys. We're not just sick of each other and get you know get out, get away from each other for a month, um, but be in and out of here and 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 doing doing different things. Personally, just spend a bunch of time with our our family and Jerry. Six plus weeks. Let's not short. Rob Mosley. Hegarty being a, a guy who's learning a new system and only has one year in it, Wood likes to cross-train his guys. Are you less inclined to do that with a guy in, in, in Hegarty's situation? Uh, from a, initially, y- yes, uh, just in terms of being comfortable. But we'll, the way that, that, that we teach that, it's it, it almost has to occur, which is, is, you know, as we saw last year, it, you know, showed up in a, in a very positive way making the best of a bad situation. Um, but he'll, yeah, he'll be out there in the summer playing probably, you know, initially definitely center and, and both guards, you know, they'll sneak in some tap tackle reps too, just by how, how we try to, how we try to train them. Uh, but certainly playing with the limited time. Yes. A certain play on a, a much higher percentage than he normally would. Time for a couple more questions. If there are any, Ryan. Mark, have you heard an update from the NCAA on uh, Carrington's availability this fall? Uh, I have not. No. I not, no. Any more? Thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you. Wireless. Codes, come see me. Mark.